Hello, um, my name is Salvia Hunden, and this is my commentary for Real Estate Dog. Here we go. This is Kinky Murder Machine, a song whose title I don't think I'll be explaining today. Um, fuck. I don't even want to talk over this part. Oh my god. This is literally, um, this still fucking baffles me. This is genuinely one of the most intimidating things I've ever made. Um, it's my favorite thing I've ever made, I'm sure. Um, and by intimidating, I just mean, like, I listen to it, and I try really hard not to get imposter syndrome. Where, um, I, it's just, I didn't make that. Um, and, and, and the truth is I did, which is scary. But how did I make that? That is the question. Oh, hold up. It's so edgy. The things that I was upset about in this song when I was making it are so far from how I feel right now and how I will ever feel again. Um, which is good, which is very good. I'm very glad that I can no longer relate to this song at all. Um, it's actually funny. I pretty much did a 180 from it. Um, let me think of how I can describe this song, um, as gently as I can without just fucking myself up bad. Um, it's about hating myself for things that I'm into. Um, hold on. I had that joke in the books for a while, um, in the very first demo of this song I had that. That is one of the things that stayed the entire time, just, there was actually a period of time where I was really scared that I would get in trouble for using that, for, for saying furfag, um, and then I realized people have called me that for a long time, and reclaiming slurs can be kind of, kind of liberating. So, you know what? There is a little wave of fur faggotry coming northeast from Denton, Texas. I think I said nor- I think I specified northeast back then because I was- I still am a Giants fan, but that was particularly when, um, I was like, I've moved so much in my life, um, I've, I have no identity, so I'm gonna stick to the northeast, because that's where I was born, even though I've never lived a conscious day of my life there. This- anyways. <laughs> Um, this is Don't Go Out, um, a collaborative song between me and my cousin, Wonton, who is an incredibly, incredibly, incredibly talented, in just, ugh, so talented producer, um, who is the initial thing that got me to want to make music. Well, I, I already, to make electronic music, excuse me. I have been making, um... Uh, definitely not car seat headrest clone music. Um, shamelessly putting my inspirations on my sleeve for a bit. But then we started, um, making, like, I guess, like, like, rap instrumentals? Like, beats? Back and forth? Well, not back and forth. They started making them. And I was like, shit, that sounds really cool. I want to join you. So, I started making some too, and now, uh, it's stuck. And now I'm making electronic music. Um, in particular, th th this is, um, hold on. Yeah, this, this is pretty confidently where my part starts. Um, so this, this beat started um, as Wonton using my kick drum. I'm pretty, no, 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 didn't use my kick drum. I'm pretty sure they made this kick an ultra beat, um, which is crazy because I don't know how to use that shit. Um, and then just put OTT on it. Fun fact, I don't know how to use OTT. I don't know what it is. It's so simple. It boggles my mind. I will learn it someday. Apparently, it's important. People tell me it's important. But, um, I sampled the, um, I think it's like a rim hit. Like, like the, the rim shot of, um, Jesus Christ. That sounds bad. There's probably a better non-sexual word for that. I sampled the rim of the drum to make a melody. These songs are too goddamn fast. 
to do anything valuable over them. This is Real Estate Dog. Fun fact about Real Estate Dog, um, the only read it's so usually when you have a song that um, is the the name, the album name, song, whatever you call that, I forgot. I know the word, but I don't know how to pronounce it, so I'm not gonna say it and embarrass myself. Um, it's because it's important. But this song is not important to the album. I mean, it is, but not conceptually. The only reason I decided to name it Real Estate Dog was um, I had this meme where it was this video of like a bunch of people dancing, like going like like from one scene to another of people dancing, and uh, the caption was just like 2012 meme, top text, bottom text, STFU. I'm listening to Real Estate Dog by Solve the Dog, and this song was playing. I didn't have a name for it yet. This song was actually called um, a Shazap for a long time, and it wasn't called that, but that's what the logic file was, because I name all my logic files stupid shit until I have to think of a name for the songs. Oh, hold up. This part's really cool. That is Zapdos from Pokemon. It's the, the, the Zapdos cry, hence the name Shazap with just so many effects on it. Just a, s a stupid amount of effects on it. God knows, I was bored. I was just hunched over in my dorm, just slaving away, doing college work, and somehow finding the energy to do music too, which fucks me up because now I have a job and college. How the fuck did I manage to make music, let alone this music? Now I'd be lucky making a Mill Pup remix with the amount of work that I have. It's ridiculous. But anyways, back to my story. Um, I started sending that meme around and people were like, Oh cool, this song is called Real Estate Dog. And I was like, fuck it, it's Real Estate Dog now. Whose birthday is it? It's Mewtwo's birthday. Um, look up Mewtwo. Um, I, I forget the exact quote. It's like, and on, on February 6th, Mew gave birth to a new Pokemon. So Mewtwo's birthday is February 6th, and my birthday is February 6th. I didn't know what to name this song for a long time, but Mewtwo's birthday is February 6th, and I was like, hey, that would be kind of cool to name this February 6th because, uh, you know, same birthday. This is probably indecipherable, Jesus Christ. Um, let's listen. This song, um... So, honestly, Real Estate Dog was supposed to be an indie album. It was supposed to be an indie rock album for a very long time. Um, and I hated it. It was not good. I was not a good musician for a very long time. If I am one now, it's still arguable, but... I, I was inarguably bad back then. Um, but then I started getting into noisy music and electronic music. And I basically just kept making these weird demos <clears throat> that I had no plans for long term at all. Um, but they were just fun to make. And I was just exploring these sounds. Um, I really didn't know how to make music, especially with Logic. So I kind of just would break it. And that's really how most of this album was made. Just really not knowing what the fuck I'm doing and using effects in a very wrong way um, because it sounded right, because it sounded cool. You can really sum up the creation of this album like that, just me not knowing what the absolute fuck I'm doing and somehow make, I, I fucking love this part. Hold on, hold on. This is one of my favorite parts in the album. I just, oh my God. The song ended um, for, for years. Um, right when this part started, right before. I didn't know what the hell to do with it, and one day I was just like, what if I made the bass do a different thing? Because I was like, it's so fucking repetitive. It's just ba ba da ba 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 da ba for two minutes. Good song, Salve. Also, that voice is saying, um, me in a very sarcastic voice, I don't know what to do anymore because this album won't end. Because when I was mixing it, I was very tired of mixing it. And I thought it'd be funny if I hid that in there. I never thought I would tell anyone that, but no one's gonna listen to this anyways, so it's fine. Fuck it, I got a Gek on a glass. Gek on a glass. Um, this song is so painfully out of place, but I love it for that. Fuck it, I got a Gek on a glass. So, this song was my forceful response to myself treating music too seriously for a long time and being way too methodical about it. I basically got in this rut where I just didn't make creative music anymore. 
because I got in this system and I kept working on music and I was a little perfectionist and I everything I made had to be perfect. Everything I made had to be serious, real music. Good, real music for Sal the Dog. Serious music. Shit that they like on Pitchfork. <laughs> um, so I told myself I want to make a song that I'm basically just gonna like you know that song, Jesus Take the Wheel? Um, ADHD Take the Wheel. That's this song. Um, I stopped caring. I didn't care about music theory or rules or really anything. And I just made some bullshit in one night. Most of this was made in one night, which I know is very hard to believe, I'm sure. Um, how could you tell? Is it because it's simple and the composition is terrible? Um, and because there's a lot of splice samples, which I've never done in any other song? Anyways. Um, the story behind this song is I was downstairs at my dad's and I looked on the window and there was a lizard on it and something just told me <laughs> fuck it there's a geck on the glass what if I made a song and really it's a tale as old as time so I filled in the blanks Um, fun fact I can't scream I just can't do it so what I did for this, and for every other time you've ever heard me scream, except in uh, Solve the Dog Live at TFS, which I did scream and I threw out my voice for it for a day or two, was I whispered, and I put that whisper through a shit ton of distortion. The first idea I had in this song was, whatever happens, I want it to turn into a bullshit future based song, and my god I did it. This is the one part of the song that I had in my head, because like if you make a song you have parts in your head. This is the only thing that I wanted from the start, and I think I succeeded. I think this is actually one of the examples of music where I had an idea and I succeeded at it completely, and I'm very happy about it. Because damn right did I get a just stupid fucking future bass part for no reason whatsoever. I don't think anyone can hear this verse, so I'm gonna clarify. He sits there on the window, he chillin' in the light, I oh, do not hit the window, it will give him a fright. He's he's crawling across the glass now, oh god, he coming quick, please do not touch the glass now. He's biting, he's real sick. And then I go, <laughs> Which sounds like I'm screaming, it doesn't, but if I were to put that um, through a Logic guitar amp, that's how you get it. I can't scream, I cheat. Normalize cheating. Cheating is awesome. This is gonna be a fun. Every song left on this album is gonna be a fun one to talk about. Um, two things going on here. This first half was um intended to be a collaboration between me and an incredibly good musician. Please check them out. Heaven's Emperor. Um, well, uh, good friends used to be used to be pretty closer friends than I am now, unfortunately, just because I tend to uh, not send messages to people, which is my fault entirely. But I still consider them a friend. Very, very cool person. Very talented person. We were going to make an album together, um, where it was kind of just plunder phonics, um, and I, I made this the instrumental. And then I realized how cool it was, like, a year later, when I was trying to find things to put into the album to finish it. And I was like, oh my god, this sounds fucking amazing. And so, um, this was much like the rest of the album recorded, um, during 2020 lockdown. I was feeling incredibly existential. Existential. I was feeling like shit about the world. I was feeling like, um, capitalism was, um, a plague. Um, I was feeling like a pinko kami, as half my family would tell me. Um, Jesus Christ, is pinko a slur? I don't, I don't even, oh my god, I don't know, I hope it's not. I'm gonna look it up and uh, censor it if it is, but my family has called me that whenever I elaborate remotely left-wing ideals. Anyways, this half of the song is fucking funny to me. So, when I was 16, I was very edgy about myself. I hated my music so much, more than anyone else. I thought I was shit. I probably was shit, but um, I made this song in Audacity, this half of the song, 
um, to make fun of myself because I was like, wow, all of my music sounds um, like just random, noisy, bullshit, experimental as an excuse shit. So I'm going to make this song to make fun of myself, and it was literally a parody. And the only reason I know that is because the description of the original upload was um, some shit like, whoa, cool experimental music. This is Daily Routine Animal Collective sampled in the back. Um, also, that screaming was Laura Palmer from Twin Peaks because I was a indie boy, pretentious piece of shit for a piece of t a, p a period of life. I still love Twin Peaks though. I just like to rag on myself. Um, anyways, years and years and years later, I find this file of me making fun of myself, and uh, basically my reaction is, uh, "Damn, this shit bussin'." <laughs> so, if that doesn't show the the degradation of my music taste. What does? So I decided to throw it together with um, the first half because I thought they sounded really cool together and I vented about climate change and capitalism and the apocalypse I'll probably live through in 30 years. Anyways, moving on. This is cycle death. <laughs> Fuck. Oh my god. <laughs> so this song is called Cycle Death um, because it is three different demos, each of which I thought were really cool on their own, but neither of them I thought would be good enough to warrant existing as their own song and so basically i spent like a week just like putting them together in different orders different ways seeing if it would be cool and it ended up being cool this was the last song this album was waiting on to be finished because i just kept thinking is it worth it is it good i can't tell i can't tell if it sounds like shit or not i can't tell if it's worth it but it, it, i think it ended up being worth it i like this song a lot this is the first part. Um, I think it was called Cavern. Yeah, yeah. It was called Cavern. And then this is fading into, um... Haunted House, I think? I'm pretty sure this part, this demo was called Haunted House. And... It's about to get funky. Wow, 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 wow. One of the reasons that this song delayed the album for so long is because I wasn't sure if that riser was cheesy as fuck or not. And I sent this song to like all of my friends like, hey, does this riser suck? And I just couldn't make up my mind. This song delayed the album for months because I couldn't tell if it was good enough. And in the end, I think it was good enough. It's a cool song. I'm happy. Anyways, um, so it's three different demos, right? And they're all pretty dark. So I was like, I should call it Death Cycles. And then the voice in the back of my head was like, would this sound cooler if it was fucking, I don't know, cycle death? <laughs> it's so pretentious, but it, I mean, it's cool. I don't know, it's, this, part's, this part freaks me out. I made this um, in probably when I was 18. This is the oldest demo in this song by far. One of the oldest pieces of music in this album, aside from Dear God They Aren't Breathing. It's just fucking creepy. I just like, not, not much more to say about it. I was I was just sitting in bed, fucking with this drum, this, this online, uh, not online, this Logic drum machine, just microphone against my mouth, just moaning and yelping, and I was like, this shit would probably sound freaky, and I was right. Uh, I don't know what was wrong with me for uh, a couple years, <laughs> but now I make fruity pop. Um, so I don't know what happened. I don't know if I'm gonna make music like this again. Spoiler alert, I am, and there's um, an EP coming soon. God damn it. I wouldn't have said that if I wasn't tipsy. So here's where I ruined my night. <laughs> Fun fact about that audio note, audio recording thingy, voice memo, that's what I was thinking of. Um, I recorded that um, on the drive home from the airport the very first time I took my boyfriend, then friend, um, to the airport so we could go back home. My boyfriend's actually on a plane back home right now. He just spent the past week with me. It was very, very fun and nice. But um, the very first time that we spent time together was as friends. We wanted to finally hang out. And I already had a crush on him for quite some time, but he was taken, so I didn't say it. Um, but when he was here in person, um, cause you know, I've had online relationships. No, I haven't. I've had online crushes, excuse me, before, and they come and go. 
but when he was here in person, I realized, oh, fuck me, this is real. I, I love him. And I, can, I, I thought of this song on the drive home from the airport dropping him off when I thought, I'm never going to see him again. Every person that I meet after this is uh, going to be a compromise. The chorus, the chorus is about that, excuse me. Anyways, the verses I wrote months later, after we started dating, um, so basically uh, he was taken, but his girlfriend was interested in open relationships. And really, honestly, I shouldn't get into it. It's really not my place. Um, without doxing everything, just respectfully, from a distance, talking about it, um, shit went down. I'm not a polyamorous person. I'm not. My, my brain, my heart can't handle it. I have nothing against it. If it's consensual, if it's happy, then I'm happy for you. But I'm not happy like that. I can't handle it. But basically, I saw an opportunity to date literally the, the guy of my dreams, and I was like, fuck any struggles. I'll deal with those later. I need to be with him. He is my dream, my soulmate. Um, but anyways, uh, it ended up fizzling out, and be because um, it just wasn't working out at all. Everyone was kind of miserable, and we ended up being the part that worked. Um, and I don't really know how much I would be able to talk about that right now, or ever. But a lot happened. A lot happened. Um, a lot of mistreatment being realized. I'm very... Now I'm glad, in retrospect, that... Well, obviously I'm glad that we ended up being together. Because I desperately wanted it. But I didn't think it would ever happen. I thought I would end up being miserable. I thought I was stuck between a rock and a hard place. You know, um, I'm in this relationship now, and if I leave, I'm fucked. And if I stay, I'm fucked, because I can't handle Polly. I wish it was easy. This. this is my favorite thing ever. Oh, how rude of me to bring my feelings to a take. And now my love is never ending, and I'm so scared that I'll hurt you. Cry wank. Song for a guilty sadist. I I don't remember what it's called. Interpolation, I think. When you borrow a melody and lyrics. So I wrote this song as an apology letter to my boyfriend's ex because while our relationship is the greatest thing that's ever happened to me, it had to come out of pain and a period of very intense struggle and confusion. Oh, fuck. This is um, the ending of the voice memo at the start. This is uh, very real. This is legitimately me um, singing in the car on the way from the airport, improvising the chorus, which is why the melody sounds a bit different. Um, I was parked at a gas station because I, I had to pull over because I was fucking sobbing on the highway, and I just had the idea for this song. And uh, the pain in this voice is very real, and it is the sound of me completely giving up, basically. It actually fucking kills me to listen to. Uh, the rest of this album is not gonna be fun. <laughs> Ugh. I'm proud of the track list and the flow of this album, but man. Man, if the- man, man, man if the- if the ending of this album isn't just a fucking punch in the throat. My god. Um, this is no longer fun. This is a necessity. I am getting through this because I have to. Which isn't to say that I hate it, of course. I love it. I think it's the best music I've ever made. It's just a fucking bitch to listen to, you know? Ugh. I mean, Jesus Christ, what could I even say over this? It's funny. Nothing, actually. Nothing at all. Um. Fuck. It, it, it does go without saying, 
um, well, it, for me, obviously not for other people, but uh, I should say, as devastating of a song as this is emotionally, at least for me, the things that I was crying about in it and the reason that I wrote it are now gone. I wrote this when I thought the love of my life wouldn't be able to be the love of my life, but now he is, and in three months he's moving in with me. So, um, dreams happen sometimes. If there's something to take from this um, awful pain put into audio, is that, hey, I made this when I wanted to die. It sounds pretty harrowing and awful and just agonizing, but in the end, it somehow worked out. I love you, GD. <laughs> this is all in health. Um, I made this song um, in the period of 2020 lockdown where everyone thought that the world was ending. Remember that little pocket in like late March, early April when no one knew what the fuck was going on and it was really scary? And anti-maskers and shit like that weren't a thing yet because everyone was just like, what's going on? People are dying. <laughs> um, now, and I know that we're all so desensitized to the numbers and the pandemic in general now, but kind of take yourself back to that time where you looked at the news and were horrified at the concept of a couple hundred cases in your state. As hard as that might be to go back to and remember, um, it's important to remember because we're desensitized now. We see some shit that says a million new cases in my city, and it's very easy to forget that there was a time that 10 new cases in your county was um, apocalyptic. It's easy to forget that each number of that million is a person, is a soul, like us, like me, like you listening to this. This song um, was made when uh, I spent a day thinking I had COVID for the first time. Uh, I just felt like shit. I had a cough, my throat hurt, and I was terrified. I have asthma, I have chronic asthma. It's not good. My family uh, has a lot of immunocompromised people in it. My mother is immunocompromised. So I was thinking Republicans and really just anti-maskers in general uh, are refusing to put on their masks and now I'm gonna die because of it and my mom is probably gonna die too and so uh, I locked myself in my room and in that fear and dread I made a song that samples ventilators and um, recordings of my moaning and groaning and strained breathing um, and I made a song that is a soundtrack of um, Essentially, if I can boil it down respectfully, um, disrespectfully, um, to avoid sounding coarse, as Norm MacDonald would say, um, it's the soundtrack of a non-believer of facts and science. Um, you know. Yeah. It's not fun to talk about, honestly. Um, I was convinced that I was about to die. I didn't know anything about this virus about the pandemic. No one really did. I just knew that millions of people were dying and uh, my family's immunocompromised and I had this, potentially this, this, this virus and who knew what would happen, but it felt like my world was ending and I was very scared. And at the end of the day, I was completely fine. But uh, the mental torture that 2020 caused, especially the former half, um, I don't think we'll be forgetting forgotten. I think it'll be a generational trauma, probably. I made this as a single, and from the day I made it, I knew I, it needed to close Real Estate Dog. Everything in the middle is fine when I make an album, but the intro and the outro are very specifically made things, and I knew this had to be the outro. Jesus fucking Christ, man. Get a goddamn therapy session, Salve. Um, this verse fucking chills me. I think it's one of the most fucked up things I've ever written. I, I don't particularly like it, but I'm proud of it. 
it's a death incantation of sorts against those that cause the world to be the way it is and uh, cause what I believed at the time to be the my demise. That's the fucking line, isn't it? That's the fucking line. That, 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 that's just the line from the album, isn't it? Jesus Christ. That, 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 that's really the lyric from the album. Big fan of uh, things that end like that. Watch the movie uh, First Reformed with Ethan Hawke in it. It's an incredible movie. Um, the ending of it just happens in an emotional climax, and it's kind of devastating to watch. And ever since I saw that, I've been a very big fan of endings that do that. It just baffles the shit out of me every single time. And it's handy, obviously, because, like, how do I end this song? But also, I think I'm going to do it just by, uh, one, taking the easy way out, admittedly, and two, uh, devastating you, the listener. Fuck you. <laughs> So that's real estate, dog. Um, wow, fucking hell. It's been a full year, and I still can't believe it exists. I hope I can make something that's this good again. Um, we'll have to see. But, um, I don't know. Make of it what you will. If if this stopped at, like, Gek on the Glass, I would have had some fun things to say, probably. But, like, <laughs> I mean, oh my god, man. <laughs> Sorry about that last part of the album. Um, fuck. Yep. I wrote a tweet. Um, I'm gonna read that because it feels better than ending this album with me just being really upset at the upsetting imagery I made in this album. <clears throat> Opening my drafts. One year ago this week, I finally released my debut album, Real Estate Dog, after four years of work. It is still my greatest achievement, and it has been such an amazing year watching where it's gone and how it's been a part of people's lives. Thank you, everyone who has listened to it, everyone who has loved it, everyone who has had it be a part of their lives. It's not a sarcastic reading that. I didn't mean for that to happen. Um, I'm kind of just coping. <laughs> Getting some good coping humor. Um... Thank you. Just from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much, man. I really just can't believe this album exists. I talked about it for a really long time, and I genuinely never thought it would happen. Um, I never thought I would really do much at all. So um, really, at the end of the day, if I never do anything again, at least I have this. Um, if I am forgotten, at least I have this. Like... Really, anything could happen. I, I don't know if I'll make music like this again. But if I fade into obscurity, if I blow the fuck up, any of the above, all that matters to me is I have this. I think this album will always be just my my shining example of art. Un just 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 unfiltered from my fucking heart just me that's that's really the best way that i could put this album it's just me i mean it goes so sad so happy so high so low it really goes everywhere which can lead to a bit of an inconsistent listen i guess but at the end of the day it's me there's no genre that i cared much about uniting the album around there's no feel no vibe really no time or place but at the end of the day what matters is it's me and i hope that this album can just be a way for my soul to live on just across time and space i guess that probably sounds stupid um but it means something to me i just 
I think that this album is me. And if it's done something for you, I am incredibly happy to hear that. Um, I know that, you know, I'll upload a, a Lemon Demon cover or something. And um, that's probably what most people know me for. But really, if if there's people out there that listen to this album and get something out of it, um, thank you. I'm happy to hear that. That's why I do it. It's not easy making this, and it's a lot harder to publicly release it. So if it's doing something out there, if it's really just bringing something to anyone in any way, shape, or form, um, it's a success. So thank you very much to everyone who's listened, loved, hated, anything, really anyone who's touched it, just thank you. And to anyone who whose lives have been positively impacted by it, I'm very happy to hear. And to anyone out of all of those groups that have just not only taken something good out of it, but have decided to show that, whether through supporting me, spreading the word of my music, any of that stuff, just those people, the people that have just stuck stuck with me. Thank you. From the bottom of my heart, thank you for listening. What a fucking bummer. <laughs> I miss when this was fun. Um, okay, I hope you enjoyed. Real Estate Dog is one year old today. <laughs> that was my party blower. Bye.